Welcome to another episode of Just One More Fix. This is James. With me in this episode is Lee, Carrie, and Lacey. Hey. Hi. Hello. You can find us online at justmorefix.com or on Twitter at Just One More Fix. If you like us, head over to iTunes or Google Play and give us writing any comment. In this episode, we're going to celebrate our first year as a podcast. Welcome to welcome to another episode of Just One More Fix. We are celebrating our one year as a podcast. This is episode 52. Use the word. Say the word. Birth anniversary. Oh, yeah. So we're pretty stoked for that, and hopefully you are too. Uh, we made it a year, which is in podcast time is a long time, apparently, which is pretty awesome. Yay. I feel older and wiser. I not sure that I do. I feel like our listeners feel older and wiser. They should, because we put out great advice. 100% great advice. Every bit of it, I think. Everybody needs to hear my opinion. <laughs> there you go. We have several announcements on this show. We're uh, Well, I guess we'll lay out what we're going to do today. So we're just going to sit here and geek out about things that we've done because of the podcast, so how it's changed our gaming, stuff that happened at Gen Con because of the podcast. Basically, we're going to talk about ourselves for a while. Well, our podcast. Yeah. Because we're awesome. That's true. We have street cred now. <laughs> you might say we're our favorite subject. No. <laughs> You're my favorite subject. That's right. The first announcement, I suppose, is I guess this all got started as we've grown our podcast. We've had this steady increase in listeners and had a great time and decided that we wanted to grow and do better and thought that a podcast network would be the next logical step. So we started kind of shopping around and I don't know, we saw some, but nothing that quite exactly fit. Well, then Gen Con happened. I went to one of the broadcasts that the Gun Geek Network did there. Talked with them about podcasting and some technical stuff, and which was terribly technical stuff. Yeah, it was that part was technical. <laughs> that part was terribly boring, but I did learn quite a bit, which is good. And then, long story short, we are now joining the Gunna Geek Network. They picked us up, so we're super stoked about that. And more importantly, we're super stoked to be, I believe, their first tabletop gaming podcast on their network. The other ones are geeky and have things that relate to it, but. Not in the same way that we do. Yeah, so we're the first tabletop gaming one, which is really cool that they're going to broaden their horizons and uh, stretch their wings into the gaming world. So we're super stoked about that. We're going to grow together. Hooray! So yeah, this seems really cheesy. It is. It is. It's hokey. Mm. I demand utmost Uh seriousness (laughs) in all things. So I'm really not sure what to say about about it, other than it's a really cool network that looks to be a lot of really good shows that range the topics of Doctor Who... Gallifrey Public Radio. Which I thought I was really the, the best name, name ever. I was like, man, that's super cool. Because we're big Doctor Who fans here. Uh, we would reference our running of a dread Doctor Who game, which was awesome. What was that you said, Carrie? Game of Thrones. Yeah, that one's called Tyrion's Landing? I think it's called Tyrion's Landing. It is. No, it is. I yeah. believe you. Okay. You're like all quiet, like not not talking and scared to talk or now or something. But Oh, me? Yeah, you're like all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's also one called Pop X Cast. I feel like I messed it up. Hold on. I thought it sounded wicked interesting because it was a mixture of like science fiction and uh, pop culture. Yeah, Pop X Podcast. Pop X Cast. Right on. There's a lot of shows about uh, comics and other geeky movies and stuff, but everybody on the network is geeky in some vein or another. And lots of tabs that lead to very interesting places and pictures. Yeah. And, and videos. The most favorite thing that I have found, I think, for it, which is just from the podcasting side, is that there's a a, a podcast called Better Podcasting, which is where a lot of this got started. Because I know from Gen Con that there are several people that listen to us that are also podcasters, and they provide a lot of technical advice and ways to make your podcast better. So those of you that are listening that do podcast should definitely check them out because there's a lot of good advice. Yeah, good, solid stuff there. So right on. Technical. Technical. Stuff. Numbers. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> numbers are bad basically the the content of our show isn't going to change any uh but just we're going to hopefully be able to reach a broader audience and get our gaming advice and how we our approach to tabletop gaming and our reviews out to more people and hopefully hopefully with a little bit of luck create some more gamers which would be cool true that oh more baby gamers yeah you could say that's our end game oh i see what you did there that's almost as bad as the pun that I dropped by accident on the interview. <laughs> oh, it was oh. so good, though. <laughs> yeah, so we're interviewing Zach Smith from... 
Land that Pleasant. wrote Red and Pleasant Land. And I went from talking to him to say, well, that's quite a rabbit hole to go down to or something along those lines. And I was stopped right. immediately and was like, right. oh, my God, I that just came out of my mouth. So. <laughs> I thought it was intentional and I was very excited about it yeah. because I love puns no, probably it, too much. It was not intentional at all. The highest and, form of... of uh, or lowest... I, I, How depending. dare you, sir? <laughs> but either way, it rolled out of my mouth. And that interview, just for those of you that listen to it, is basically unedited. We left everything in there so that nothing, not that anything would get taken out of context, but it was more of a conversation. So I didn't want to edit it down or anything. So it's basically uncut, essentially. And it was a lot of fun to sit down with those guys, which is one of my highlights for the past year that we've done. Just sort of stumbled into it because of Carrie. So big thanks to her for that. But I sad that she talk. couldn't be there. But... I am sad I wasn't there. I think you totally should have just sucked it up and came, but that's just me. And then had nothing to teach the next day. That would have been great. The, how many days are they in school? Like 300 and... 180. So we're down to 170. <laughs> but what is one less day of education? A lot when you only get 180 a year. It's only 180th of what they're going to get. I can so. count on one hand the number of days I learned anything in history class. There you go. <laughs> See? Oh, oh. Ooh, you, you cut deep. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> it's because you weren't my teacher. That's right. Or, or because... If I were in high school, I would pay you all kinds of attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was just a terrible pun, but, you know, neither here nor there. So, anyway... The other announcement I guess we have is that we are going to be starting a Patreon that'll go live probably within the next month, month and a half or so. We're still working on getting it set up and designed. Wait, what's a Patreon? So the Patreon is a way for people to tip and help promote content providers and artists, podcasters, any anything essentially. What will you use money for? So the idea is, is that the part of when we started this was my vision was to always have our podcast be free. And to try and provide, well, great free gaming advice. But doing the podcast does cost a little bit of money. So the idea is is that we will use a Patreon to fund the podcast to just pay for hosting fees and all that kind of stuff. If we get extra, can we get an extra mic? Uh, Yeah, we're going to. Well, I guess we would use that stuff to imp- upgrade some of our equipment. because we do. mean you don't want to sit four inches <laughs> away from me? <laughs> so yeah, for those of you that can't excited. see us. I don't want to shower you. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, normally there's only three of us, but sometimes we have four, and we may do some with uh, four or seven. five of us. No, seven's too many. I would like to make the suggestion that we can get four mics, but only use two of them when we do interviews with multiple people. That way, they <laughs> have to continue to sit oddly close it, to yeah, each it other. Was I like fun. the way people smell. <laughs> it was fun when we did the Lamentations interview. We had uh, uh, Patrick, uh, Zach, and uh, James kind of smooch together, sharing two different mics. So it was it was fun. It was a good time. But they were good sports about it because it was sort of unexpected. We didn't expect to do that at all. So we we adapted and overcame, and they were more than accommodating for us. So maybe they like to smooch. So anyway, maybe. the 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 Patreon thing is uh, hopefully going to come together in the next month or so, and we will uh, blast that out to you guys now. But just so it doesn't catch you off guard, and so that you guys can see it coming down the road. And so with Patreon, typically you get some kind of reward. Correct. Sort of similar to Kickstarter. You yeah. give us a X amount of dollars and we give you X amount of free hugs. <laughs> so basically no where I'm going with this is if you want to drop us a comment, send us an email, let us know what you think would be a cool incentive and we will consider your idea. Right on. Where can they do that at, Lacey? Whatever your email is. So you can... <laughs> James at justformerfix.com. Yeah, so you can send it to james at justformerfix.com. Or carry at justmorefix.com. And that's C A R R I E at justmorefix.com. Do you have a Just One More Fix email account? Do you want one too? Do you have one? No. <laughs> Kurt oh, does. Okay. Kurt has one, but he doesn't really check it. I really don't. <laughs> so so you can send it to either me or, or Carrie, or you can hit us up on Twitter at Just One More Fix or, or Facebook on our Facebook group. Just One More Fix podcast. Yep. And you can find that. That's all linked on our website at Just One More Fix. We have a YouTube. Are the comments disabled? No, you can comment on there as well. You can put the comment on the, on the YouTube. Wow. Uh, the YouTube. The YouTube. You're so old. <laughs> it's kind of like the Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. So lots of good things coming for us, but enough self-promotion about that kind of crap. I don't want to go on and on too much. So I thought we would just say some awesome things that happened this year because of the podcast, I guess. I got start? on a podcast. The first episode, I wasn't on it. That's Now true. I am. True story. I was tricked into it. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess we could lay out a couple of things. There's five or six people that have been on the podcast, and we have kind of a rotating group of people, ideally. More than that. The four of us, plus Kurt, Caleb, and Greg have all been on it. Okay, so seven. And Isaiah. Oh, yeah. 
And we did an interview. Well, they're not they're not actual hosts. I oh would love gosh, to have I them. I can't count that high. I've run out of fingers. I no, used my tongue. Or Dave or Haley on it. <laughs> no, not yet. So either way, we've had several people on here, but it's a rotating group of people. One, because we all like different things in gaming. So some people are more inspired by certain topics than others. And also schedules suck and we all have real jobs. So we use the word real loosely. True story. Yeah. I spend most of my time sitting at work. So. <laughs> and sleeping. He sleeps at work. I sleep only at night. I usually don't take naps at work. Unless I'm really tired. Lacey actually works at work. Yeah, she does. You can tell by the bitter look on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see it? Feel it seething through the microphone. <laughs> yeah. One other thing I guess we should mention is that I know a lot of other podcasts don't revisit topics, and I don't think that we have a plan to rehash everything, but I was thinking the other day that if there is something that comes up that where we've changed our opinion on it or something, that we would revisit topics, not just because... We ran out of ideas, but because our our opinions on those things had changed. And our audio is better. That is true. I forgot I need to deliver an apology to everyone who's been listening to us since the beginning. So hopefully... Stop playing with your pocket. All right. (laughs) Can you hear that? Yes. Can you not? The Velcro is... Oh, I didn't hear it. I could hear it. I just thought it was your slobber. Nope. So I... I suppose we, I should apologize to everybody that's been listening to us since the beginning because at the very beginning, the first few episodes, not even first few, probably first 15 or 20, I was still learning the editing process and how to work Audacity, which is what we use to do all the recording and editing. And the theme music was incredibly loud. And so I suppose we, I, not we, me, just me, it's my fault. I uh, should probably apologize to all of you who have blown out eardrums because of me, but hopefully we fix that. And yeah. Onwards and upwards. All right. So have you guys had any awesomeness or changed your gaming because of the podcast? I wouldn't say that I've discovered that I like to give my opinion on on new things that we try, but uh, I, I enjoy doing it. And I get to do it more because I'm, I'm on the podcast. It's like just reviews or? Yeah. Reviewing new games or old games. Mm-hmm. Either way. I've become more aware of what I've been playing, like who the writers are and what the system is. I don't and like some of my flaws as a player. Right. On. I, I yeah, that absolutely. I realize that I hardly ever run any games and so since we've been doing this, I started actually running some games. And I leveled up as a gamer. I, I that's a big thing. I think my gaming has improved, although I will say that a lot of advice that we give here I don't always take and I've been trying to make a effort to be like I need to do the cuz like they're all good ideas I feel like cuz they come from us, but I do feel like that we need to take that advice sometimes, you know, log and, and splinter. Yeah. It, but it's like, it's hard to break your old habits sometimes, you know, and that's something that I've really been working towards. And I feel like our gaming, at least at our tables has definitely improved over the past year from all this nonsense we've been yapping I'm, about. I'm also more okay with saying I like a game and I don't like a game instead of just going along with everything. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, that's part of our review. And when we talked to a lot of the um, game designers and people that were selling their games at Gen Con was like, we're not here to poo-poo all over your game. We review games we like. If it's a game that we don't like, we don't review it because why do I want to play games that aren't designed for with me as your audience? So now we do always talk about who the game isn't for in ways we think the game can be improved. But I guess all of our reviews are pretty positive, but it's because we like those games. We're their target market, I guess. So I also like telling people I'm on a podcast. It makes me feel really cool. <laughs> we do have nerd cred now. And I use cool very loosely. <laughs> I feel good about supporting a product that I happen to enjoy. What do you mean? Like games that we've reviewed yeah. and played or whatever? Yeah. And talking about games that we've played and mm-hmm. reviewed. I agree. More than just buying it and playing it. And I feel like when I buy a game, I have double the reason to do it. Instead of just buying it for me, I'm now buying it for me and all of our listeners. So like, I felt like... I could excuse purchasing at Gen Con more <laughs> because there was reasoning behind it. I needed yeah. to buy those things so I could tell you guys about them. Right on. Yeah, we go a little crazy <laughs> at every Gen Con and we come home and I'm always like, why do we buy all these games? But I will say over the past year, I set out the goal to play like 80%, 90% of the games that we haven't played yet. And I think we actually probably have made that benchmark because we've played most everything on the shelf now. We just bought a whole bunch of new games at Gen Con. So we'll have to keep up with that. We really have played most of the games that we have up there, actually to the point now where we're down to running out of RPGs that we had played consistently to be able to review. So 
I'm more willing to try games that involve some kind of system. What do you mean? Well, like Dread is like the non-system game and it's my favorite. And then I play Fate, which is like sort of system. The other day, I actually ran a small D&D game for you guys where you were goblins and I accidentally killed you all. Um, but <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I forgot what it's like to have three books open on your lap at the same time going, oh God, where do I find this? And I just look at you guys like, hey, um, does anybody recall which one of these books this chart is in? Because I I don't know. And What's then up? you're like, you don't need to look that up. The stats for this are such and such. And I'm like, oh, well, that's, <laughs> yeah. here, you do this. <laughs> uh, we've, we've played. Hooray for wizards. Yeah, we've played too many. <laughs> I'm just going to tell the encounters. story and ask you questions <laughs> periodically and then point to someone when I need to know what the system actually says about yeah. it. <laughs> so in an encounter with five goblins, on average, how many hit points would you lose before they died? <laughs> Oddly <laughs> enough, the first game that Lacey ever ran for me was D&D. Was it? We went it's through a true. Tower. It was a uh, no. We went through a tower. It was a Dungeons and Dragons Robin Hood game, wasn't that the first no, one? No, no. You ran a game where we went through a wizard's tower Me, and we opened up. I a was door. a wizard and James was a dwarf, and we killed a purple worm by throwing it through a hammer and summoning dire badgers around it. Every door that we opened was a different room. I was a vaguely world. remember this. I actually don't remember this at all, but it sounds fascinating. <laughs> I <laughs> did it. I very nearly turned into a chaos beast. I'm pretty sure Carrie died. I died. Wow. James made a giant geode with all the gems we gutted out of the purple worm. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, didn't you have some kind of weird melting pot of I think so. Awesomeness. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Either way. Yeah. You mean stone yeah. shape? Sure. It yeah. was a slime mold. Oh yeah, pot, I made a geode because right? I we like hit it because we couldn't get like it back. It was a slime or mold thing inside a pot, right? Yeah. Either way, whatever. I don't recall the reason for this. So I have a cool question. I remember out of all now. the games that we've reviewed, do you guys have a favorite of the games that we've reviewed? No. I love them all. You're I'm just kidding. I love Dread the best. It's my favorite. I'm going to need a list. That is a long list. <laughs> Maybe I should look at the list before so I So while they peruse them, <laughs> we've done almost 33 reviews now, I think. Now, not all of them have been role-playing games, but most of them have because we ran out and we had to review some other things. And like most people, I thought we most people that play role-playing games, I think also play board games. So that's how it got us into the board game reviews and that we could play games that or we could review games that were you played between role playing games. That's a lot of I said games a lot of times in that sense. You lost me. <laughs> I was just gonna start listing them all as ones that I liked. Uh, do you have a favorite though that we've reviewed? I really like our I have top some 10. that I like more and less. <laughs> but um a favorite? No. Did we review Burning Wheel? Or just talk about some No, of its I philosophy? think we did review Burning Wheel. I'm not sure. Maybe we didn't. I don't know. Is it on the list in there? What's C? I don't know. I, I got to about twelve and quit reading it. Changeling the Lost. Oh, okay. I think we may have. I know we reviewed Mouse Guard, which is Burning Wheel light kind of like. But Oh, you know what the other thing I noticed is like now we're playing games more often without having to have the whole group here. Like before it was always all of us, but now there are games that you guys have played that I haven't even played. <laughs> oh, yeah, that has happened now. <laughs> which is kind of neat. Yeah. On this list, my three favorite for the year were Monst... No, I'm picking three. One. Three. One. Oh. Do three. Go for it. Monster Hearts, 7C, and where did it go? Lamentations. I I was like, I softball pitched that one in for you, and you didn't hit it out. I was I mean, like, come on, start. man. Monster Hearts, Lamentations, and 7C are I don't... the three favorite for the year. <laughs> so that was Isaiah coming in here, but we just booted him out. Wait, if Carrie gets to pick more than one, can I pick go more for than it. one, too? Go for it. Why did I see the list again? <laughs> okay, mine is definitely Dread, Spirit of 77, and something else on the list. Spirit of 77 is such a great game. It's so fun. So fun. So, so For fun. For those of you that nonsensical. haven't checked it out, go check out a review. But it is a game about. I would really recommend it after playing a Burning Wheel game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you need a game that is really going to lighten things up for you after you've had like a very serious, intense campaign or something, there's probably nothing better than Spirit of 77. Monster Hearts. The Monster Hearts can have a serious element to it, though, because like there's this dramatic tension and all this kind of stuff, the awkwardness of being a teenager, whereas Spirit of 77 is 100% full throttle fun, and that would be a promo that would go full on throttle it fun! in the 70s. It would go right on there, so I'm just saying. Fun side note, somebody I was gaming out, uh, gaming at, gaming with at Gen Con at one of our events said that he had previously gone to a game run by the creators of Spirit of 77, and it was a Spirit of 77 game. Uh, and he said it was just a lot of fun. The guys, they were crazy, like standing on top of the table, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I really am sad I missed that event. <laughs> That's awesome. 
<laughs> monkey fun games monkey fun studios oh my bad monkey fun studios Jeez, Lee, you could have read the list 60 times by now. <laughs> I think I've read it four. <laughs> Lamentations of the Fleshy Princess, Fate, and Flame Seven Princess. Sea. Fate? Fate has got to be on there. It's one of like the most diverse and versatile, I guess. Probably run yeah, yeah. Fate a decent amount. <laughs> I'm probably going to run Fate. You know, I'm, I think games. I would go with Trail of Cthulhu or any of the gumshoe, you know, like Knights Black Agents, Trail of Cthulhu stuff. Fate, for sure. Oh. What? Orpheus, obviously. Yeah. Dread Spirit of 77 and Orpheus. I didn't want to bring up Orpheus. I always like to you bring know, up Orpheus. You know, I think we've gone like 15 episodes without mentioning Orpheus, so we it probably past due. we should probably start getting back to that again, that old tradition. Hey, something cool. I really liked the little subtext for last episode where we listed every game that we mentioned and the website so you guys could check them out and buy them or just look at them. I, I usually do that. I mentioned anything. No, but it was so cool because it was like all four of us had our own. Oh, games your own picks. And it was I don't know. It just looked really cool. And I went through and clicked on them, even though I seen them and touched them all. Right. Because I felt like it. <laughs> Did you? You didn't say your three. I I mentioned fate, and I think I'm going to go with like Trail of Cthulhu, and I think probably mashed. Like I had such a good time. We only ran that one session, but I really liked that game. Like, I really, really do. I feel like it just captures the essence of it so well. You know what I'm saying? Plus, it's like... You're just saying that because they credentialed you. They gave you more gamer cred. <laughs> uh, they may have given me a credit in one of their things that they produced. That's true. But no, I really do like the game. It His is opinion fun. is not valid. It's been purchased. <laughs> <laughs> not, not quite like that. But. We demand full disclosure. Yeah. Did you guys, in the course of Gen Con, run into anybody awesome or fun because of the podcast or anything? Or We've already talked about it. Did we? Kind of. We ran into one guy that wouldn't tell us what his name was. Oh, yeah, there's a game. Yeah, yeah. What? Still waiting on that email, <laughs> mystery designer. What are you talking about? Yeah, he, he, he said that he was either famous or infamous in the gaming world, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't show us his badge or tell us <laughs> what his name was. <laughs> oh, I vaguely remember hearing about that. Yeah. Yep. I ran into a lot of game designers, including one of my favorite games, game designers. So go that. When I got to have a, a brief conversation with Ken Hyde about Vampire 5 and some things they were doing with that and stuff and it was a good time it was pretty cool so i got to tell robin laws that i cited him in a college paper oh did you really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you cite him for i was writing a paper on the two types of heroes that he talks about in the introduction to oh, the, the new hero iconic and, and dramatic I iconic and dramatic and i my paper was on how iconic heroes are heroes and dramatic heroes are not heroes <laughs> what did he say he agreed he said he'd yeah. been trying to make that point for a while oh really and and he was wearing an amazing Cthulhu shirt. It was that hidden Cthulhu in the pattern. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it could be hidden. It was like a gray Cthulhu on a bright pink shirt. <laughs> to us, <laughs> not to the masses. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know what Cthulhu is, perhaps, right on. You're like, oh, that guy really likes octopus a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> no, your life could be so much better oh, and brighter. I met the guy that designed the Clax game and a couple other games. And he was really exciting and cool to talk to. And I ended up buying games. Yeah. That's that's one thing I will say is that going to Gen Con and meeting a lot of people and shaking a lot of hands and stuff, everybody that was there, designers, people that were just there to attend Gen Con and, and have a good time, were super awesome and more than happy to like sit down and talk with you for a few minutes. I'm like, hey, I've got this podcast, whatever. Like Everybody is super cool about it. So I am just guess I'm glad to be part of a really super friendly and awesome community. I was able to hand out all of my ribbons. Yeah. We had bad ribbons this year, so. I think I handed out like five, which is a big deal for me. <laughs> it would be really cool to see pictures of people with their ribbons on. Hint, hint, hint. Another weird thing that is sort of sad for my wallet. Since we've been more involved with the gaming situation, I've really delved into the Kickstarter thing. So if you'd asked me this time last year about Kickstarter, I'd be like, nah, I don't know. Sometimes James is on there. Um, but now I found like I'm in there like lurking to see like what new games are coming out that haven't been released yet. <laughs> and I actually bought a couple of games on Kickstarter, like help back them or whatever. And, and I'm going to receive them that were being promoted at Gen Con. So then you get to have that moment. And they were like, oh, you know, this is the new game, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I backed it on the Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have that moment like, oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I really oh, think that you welcome. spend more time on Kickstarter than I do now, to be honest. I have a problem. <laughs> 
It's, there are worse problems. It's a uh, probably. It's at least partially uh, eclipsed my Amazon problem. So that's that's a good thing. <laughs> you said uh, eclipsed, and we had an eclipse this week. Uh, yep. <laughs> that is true. Word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought, but I lost it because of Gary's eclipse comment. <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> Eclipse. He was kidding when he said he had a thought. No, I really wasn't. I really had something to say there. but I also realized oh. how sad I am that we don't have a local gaming store. Because I see all these people like, you know, ask about this at your local gaming store. And we interviewed the Lamentations of the Flame Princess guys. And they were talking about free RPG day and how, yeah. you know, the guys at the local gaming store weren't putting their books out. And I'm like, well... I don't even have one of those. I wish I had so, a gaming store that wouldn't put out books. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to badmouth the place in Terre Haute, but it's not really like a gaming store. No, I they're mean, they're more like a comic it's shop. Like and a shelf. We have more books on our shelf than they have in their gaming <laughs> to, to store. To be fair, we, we have They more have mostly board games and like Pokemon cards yeah. and stuff like that, not like RPG gaming store. Right. Yeah. We have a gaming store. And Lee got to see the owner at Gen Con this year. Yeah, biggest Gen Con ever. And I ran into Kurt while I was there. I didn't know he was there. I ran into Dave and Haley the day before we were supposed to meet up. I ran into the guy that owns the, my local gaming store. Do you Just want to passing. plug your local gaming store since you ha- are lucky enough to have one? The End Zone in Mattoon. Mattoon, Illinois. I think we're actually going to look into doing some... Starting a gaming store? No. <gasps> no. We're going to look into doing some remote podcasts where we actually go to a couple gaming stores maybe, uh, uh, if they'll have us, and uh, promote things and do a podcast at the store there. So that's something to look forward to in the future. If you live in the Illinois, Indiana area, maybe you can come out and meet I us and check us out. I would even say Kentucky. Like, I don't mind going down to Louisville area. They right. have cool things down there. Yeah. I draw the line at Kentucky. Oh. Um, There's bourbon. Oh, okay, I'm there. <laughs> right on, yeah. So we're there for bourbon and role-playing. Very good. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. I guess I got only a couple other things. Have you guys had any big changes of heart in gaming because of what we've done here? I'm perfect. I've never done anything that needs to change. So that means that if that was a big change of heart, that meant everything you did before we started this podcast was wrong. No, no, I like right then, too. We're, we're moving right along. No, because it, it was something that had changed, see? So that's what you said. So that's what we're going with. Everything Lee did before the podcast is wrong. And because of our podcast, everything you do now is right. Done. That's right. <laughs> Fair enough. I've kind of taken the inspiration thing to heart a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So now when, I mean, I love to read books, mm-hmm. but now when I'm reading books, I'm sort of thinking about like ideas I can pull from those to it's add into right my on. games. Uh, and the same thing with like music or like pieces of art that I see or, mm-hmm. you know, like something, especially featuring like a, a provocative character. I think like, well, okay, well maybe I could use that as like an NPC in a game right. or, you know, what do I think this person is thinking, feeling, doing, wanting, etc. <laughs> Well, I think for me, at least, a lot of things that I've always thought about gaming and how you put games together, after talking about them out loud and laying out the ideas and discussing them here, I feel like how I put my stories together and the rut that I was in for a long time in running games has, like, old habits I hard. I mentioned that earlier, but I do feel like I've started to definitely explore some new options and try and do some new things and to build better stories and to be more inspired, which has been really cool because I feel like at a certain point, I was starting to get tired of gaming, I guess, in a way, or tired of running games and just kind of be in this malaise of just going through the motions. And now because of talking about these things and I guess working them out in my head and what I was doing wrong and what I was unhappy with in gaming, I guess, now I've kind of come around and I'm like super excited about it. And after this Gen Con, some of the stuff that we got there, I'm like, I don't think I've been this excited about gaming since like third edition came out when I, you know, in whatever 2000 or whatever that was when it came out, you know. Speaking of which, we have to show you this expedition game. Yeah. Because I think you're really going to like it. Yeah, it's pretty easy. We can play, we can probably play through. If there's a, it's expedition, the RPG card game. We'll be, pl- we'll be reviewing it very soon. It uses so. an app on your phone. And, it's it's uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. It reminds me of the old, you know, sort of hero quest descent dynamic except way simpler <laughs> yeah so it should be a good time so we will be we'll there'll be a review of that coming soon and and obviously it'll take us a little while but we've got we got a lot of rpgs at gen con this year and several board games as well so it'll be more more reviews to come i know we've kind of slowed down here recently but 
Since I already talked about Expedition and Kickstarter, though, the Expedition game has a horror expansion that is actually now funded on mm-hmm. Kickstarter after Gen Con. So it's still still up there if anybody's interested. Is that it? Do you have guys, we talked long enough? I don't Should know. We talk some more? Well, I don't I mean, like, it's, I didn't really have a time length on this one. I figured it would be a short one. And it is like, if this is your first episode listening to us, this is not how our normal episode format is. We're a little more a little more directed usually it's just a pretty open I'm not conversation say structured exactly no but we just have a general conversation about a specific rpg we have topic more, yeah more of a topic yeah so but we thought this is just a fun one for us to kind of geek out about the fun things that we've had happen over the past year because of the podcast all the awesome people we've met and everything else so do you guys have anything else to mention i completely forgot about the last thing on the list for the things that we have planned for the next year so I know you're listening to this thinking, really, there was a list of things you guys were talking about. I didn't even notice. Yeah, when- Occasionally, we do have some <laughs> bullet points. So, yeah. So one of the things that I want to do is after the release of our interview last week with the guys from Lamentations of the Flame Princess, I would like to try and uh, land some more interviews with game designers. And not that we really I'm not into interviewing people, but I do enjoy just having a conversation with designers about what they do and how they go about doing things because I just, I find it interesting to see why they make decisions they do and the games that they're playing, I think is a really cool one to know. Cause I always wonder like, you know, Ken Height, he designs Trail of Cthulhu and all this awesome stuff and Night's Black Agents, but what is he playing? Like, you know, when he's not, not wearing his game designer hat on, you know, like what, what games is he playing? You yeah, know? So what does his game designer hat look like? Is it a captain's hat? <laughs> I don't like know. Like a pirate? <laughs> like a pirate hat. Is now. it more like, you know, like Skipper from Gilligan's Island? Or maybe it's a silly hat with feathers. I like to think it's one of those beanies that you can get on, on Amazon with the, the Cthulhu, foil one. With the Cthulhu beard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the, you pulled a beanie. mask right off. Excellent. <laughs> so, Ron, do you guys have any goals for the for this year? With, I guess it, just in general in gaming and in podcasting? I was really sad that Kurt was not able to run his game at Gen Con. Um, uh, we kind of hyped him up on here and then it didn't yeah. happen. Um, he, he had, he, he had he, a, a family, family emergency basically. Yeah. So, um, he wasn't able to do that. Uh, I am excited to see some of our just one more fix folks running games at next gen con. Yeah. So that is a commitment that we're trying to make is we are going to try and run several games at Gen Con to put our money where our mouth is. And we always talk about all this gaming advice and how to put together stories and run good games. So hopefully we're not going to suck it up too bad at it and we'll run some games for you guys and you can sit down and game with us and that'll be awesome. I also would like to go to another gaming convention this year that is not Gen Con. This is true. I think I we're like going we to try and make it to... Uh, what about HillCon? Oh, Hill- well, obviously we will yeah. be at the HillCon. <laughs> running events at the HillCon. Yeah. Who's your con? I think we're going to try and make it to, which should be a good time. It's in Indianapolis. It's who, W-H-O... Who's I guess it's who's W H O S Y E R C O N who's your con and it is in Indianapolis. I'm not sure what the actual dates of it are, so just Google that. It's the only thing that comes up, and you guys can check that out. And I think it's like in the spring. Yeah, and much. and we're planning on being there, and I am planning on running some games there if they have games to be ran. So come check us out there. If around our own table, I'm excited to try and run the Ragnarok Fate of the Norn, and I'm excited. To talk about Carrie running Clockwork Dominion. <laughs> I, I also heard something about Lee doing blog posting on our webpage. I do believe I, I heard, heard something that. about that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Didn't you say you were hoping to get the blog up and going this year? That was on your list of things you wanted to do? I guess it is now. There you go. Oh, See, right on. <laughs> cool. So that's one of the goals is to actually develop our blog a little bit. And, well, Lee reads a lot. He also writes a lot. And so. Or types. Either way, however you want to I say it. I always that. write it before I type it, so this the difference kind of is writing. No. This is the same problem I have with graphic novels. There should be another term for reading them, because <laughs> it's like cheating at reading. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, that will be uh, coming to you guys over the course of the next year. We're to- also developing our own webcomic, yes. which may not really be fully formed by the end of the next year, because it's quite the process, but I have started the story for it, and James is going to be working on photography and art and yeah so should be a good time exciting so hopefully uh they'll be awesome and you guys will enjoy them and if not well it'll keep us occupied i guess (laughs) i guess uh i'll 
finish things off. I have big, big ambitions this year. I want to lots of games that we've got. I'm looking forward to running the Genesis. I keep raving about it because I'm so super stoked for this game. The artwork and the way it's put together, the trailer I posted on Twitter and everywhere else on the last episode for Gen Con, episode 50, Gen Con 50. Game looks awesome. I'm looking forward to running that. Looking forward to some more Vampire 5th Edition in the next year if they keep us on the playlist list to keep doing that. And I think there's a handful of games that we have that we still have not played yet that I'm looking to get through before mm-hmm. we dig into the ones that we got this year from Gen Con. Among those are Dogs in the Vineyard, which I'm ready to go now. Atris B, which is a surreal, dark role-playing game that comes out of Sweden or... Norway, one of the two, one of the two. Scandinavia. Yeah, one of the uh, cold, dark countries up there that has some really cool elements to it. So we're looking forward to that because I really want to review that. That's been one of the best gaming experiences that I've had at a convention between that one. And I hadn't thought about that. What would be better, that one or the um, Bluebeard's Bride one? I had a lot of fun at both of those games. They're both drastically different, too. So it's kind of hard to compare them side by side. So. Right on. Well, do you guys have anything else? I can feel like you've been yammering on now for about what looks like Since 40 minutes. Since you guys talked about the games you're going to run, would you like to hear about the games that are on my list to run this Right on. Go for game? it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I plan on running another Dread game, at least one more. I'm definitely going to get into some Bluebeard's Bride. I'm planning on running that actually next month at Hillcon 2017. Uh, hopefully, if all things go according to plan. And then there's a short little Fate Accelerated hack called Omega Zone that I'm going to check out and also the PIP system core book that I backed on the Kickstarter (laughs) back to the Kickstarter again so I plan on delving into that and running some games for our younger children probably with that system Um, it's the same one that did Infestation which we reviewed and that's probably pretty much it for me I know I've still got Shadows of Estern going that's still on the back burner basically uh, I'm still going to be working full time going to school full time and now I'm going to start clinical hours which is also like having a part time job on top of that so probably all that I'm basically going to be doing this year maybe a little more Tales from the Loop as well Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm having a good time with that Yeah, there should be a review of Tales from the Loop coming very soon we've played that one several sessions now so i feel like we've got a good enough grasp to review that surprise lots of fun like that game a lot stranger things is awesome if you haven't seen it shame on you go watch it now and then come back and finish this podcast only only eight episodes so hurry it up binge it come back before they get the second season yeah in october you gonna know, be tick, gonna be tick, awesome tick there too <laughs> yeah so you mentioned hillcon and this is yeah. something i feel like One of the most fun things that we do, and I feel like every time it comes up, I want to just blast it out there to everybody because... But not really everybody because our house is large, but also small if there's 200 people in it. True, we can't have that. But (laughs) one of the things that we have done now, I think this is the third year we've done it. Is that right? Maybe. Um, Seems legit. We'll go. Three-ish. So... (laughs) We Plus get minus one. We get all of our gaming friends together because not all of our friends are gamers, but everybody that does game comes to our house and we have a, a very a large house so we can sort of house everybody here for the weekend and we get everybody here and we spend a Friday, Saturday, Sunday just gaming all the time. We plan out meals and we cook out. We have good times. All the kids come and they play and do their own things and have fun. And it's really just awesome to have essentially all the games that you would have at a convention with none of the back and forth of the hotel, no big crowds. And it's basically just a really good, relaxing time for all of us to get together and spend way too much time gaming. And there is no such thing. I agree. But I would encourage everybody out there to do this because it has been a great time. We do it every year now for several years, and I don't see any reason for us to stop. And it's actually at the point this year where I think we're going to have so many people here that we're going to have to break into two games. And actually have two tabletop RPGs going because most of the games we played, it's just not feasible to have like seven or eight players at the table at the same time. I recommend everybody do it. Get people together. And if you've got people that are interested in gaming but haven't done it, it's a great time to take the plunge because everybody is there and already having a good time. There's not really a whole lot of warm up that happens, you know, when you kind of get into the into the session, you know, it takes you a few minutes to get the ball rolling. So get your friends together, spend a weekend game, have a good time, eat good food drink good beer, all that stuff. Food. Right yeah, on. Yeah. So does that do it for us today? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I can't think of anything. All righty, right on. Well, talk so much. just want to thank everybody that's out there that's listened to us, whether it's one episode or all the episodes that we've had all the way back to last year. 
big thank you uh, from all of us for all of your guys' support. For those of you that we met at Gen Con, it was awesome. Thank you so much for all the kind words you guys had to us there. That and, one guy that won our contest. Thank you, if you're still listening. Dahi? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we had to look <laughs> Google his name. He's from Ireland. So yeah, we got to ship a game internationally, which is pretty awesome. I forgot entirely about that. Yeah, I just remembered it right now. Yeah, we gave I hope away that some, guy's still listening. We gave, so, gave If you are, give us a comment or send us an email. Yeah. It was awesome. Anyway, big thank you to everybody out there that supported us from the game designers that have sent us things for us to review, ones we've been in contact with, all the all you guys that are out there and listening in to help us grow our listenership and stuff. Um, really appreciate it. I guess what you guys, all the all the kind words from you guys is kind of what keeps us going and keeps us doing this. So without getting too sappy here, thank you very much. We really <laughs> appreciate it. And we look forward to putting out more great content. And as always, you can find us online at justonemorefix.com or on Twitter at Just One More Fix. And... You can find us on Patreon. Soon enough. Very soon, yeah. But also, the best way you can support us is by going online to wherever it is you guys get your... Find our podcast at and give us a rating and a comment or sharing us with someone else who out there who doesn't doesn't know about us. So hopefully, if this is your first episode, first episode listening to us, you'll stick around and check out some of our other stuff because this is not a normal format, like we said. But wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to everybody and talk about the great things that have happened to us because of the podcast and the way it's changed our gaming and what we do. So... Thank you very much, and I guess we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at Incompetech.com. You can find us at JustOneMoreFix.com. And follow us on Twitter at JustOneMoreFix. 